Let's say you're doing an interview for a job. You've thought about why you want the role and why you want to join the company, but then you get into the interview room and the interviewer says, Alexis, why should we hire you over everyone else that we're considering? That's a pretty open-ended question and it's pretty tough to answer in the moment. Or let's say you're uh, working at an internship over the summer and you're meeting with your team to discuss either an investment um, opportunity that you have or some other decision that your team needs to make. And you walk into this meeting thinking that you're going to discuss the pros and the cons of the um, decision that you're going to make, but instead your manager turns to you and says, Brian, should we make this investment opportunity? Do you think it's a good idea? Or let's say that you're, you know, this summer you're going to an engagement party and your um, friends who are getting married ask you to say a few words a little unexpectedly and you weren't expecting that. So what would you do in that case? If you're starting to feel a little bit stressed out, that's because you should. These questions are hard, especially if you haven't had a chance to prepare what you're going to say because speaking on impromptu is hard. And while they represent a wide range of scenarios, from interviews to business meetings to social settings, they have a lot in common. They all involve um, unexpected questions, they involve high stakes situations, and they involve an audience whose opinion matters to you. And as a result, you want to sound both confident and knowledgeable when you're speaking, even if you haven't had a chance to prepare. Um, so, we've ha we've, through this class and through the coaching by JD, Stephanie, and uh, Bert, we've all had a chance to become blossoming presenters of prepared material. But what happens when you can't prepare? We're here because we want to help you sound polished even when what you're really feeling like is this. <laughs> We're going to walk you through three scenarios, the three scenarios that I just mentioned, interviews, uh, business meetings, which could also apply for class participation um, at the GSB, and social settings, and show you a framework for each of those that'll help you sound polished even if you haven't had a chance to prepare. So Sydney's going to walk through what you can do in an interview setting. Aileen's going to walk through what you can do in a business setting. And finally, Matt is going to show you how to adapt those two frameworks to something that's of a more personal or social nature. As Aditi mentioned, we are first going to talk about interviews, impromptu speaking in the context of interviews. Before coming to the GSB, I was at a company where I did a lot of interviews. And by the end of it, I often felt like this. The person I was talking to had been rambling, I couldn't get to the point, I couldn't understand what was it that they had really added to that situation. So I want to offer a format for you when you're in an interview that you can use to help structure your answers and help your interviewer understand why you are so awesome and perfect for the job. And that format is STAR, which stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. So I'll give you a little demonstration, starting with Situation. And the key with the situation is that you don't want to give too much detail. The tendency is for people to get into a lot of detail and the interviewer kind of gets lost in the situation itself. You want to just offer enough information so that they understand the context and the stakes. So if I were given the question, tell me about a time when you were up against a really tight deadline. I might say, okay, I had six weeks to get our company compliant with various consumer protections regulations to meet an investor requirement and what was at stake was tens of millions of dollars. Very brief and to the point. Next, the task. The task can also be brief. My task was to make sure that we met that deadline that had been set by investors so that we got the money that we needed. End of story. And then action. This is where you want to spend most of your time. You really want to help the interviewer understand what is your thought process? What did you do and why did you do it? So in this case, I started with a project plan. And I talked to various people across the company to try to understand 
how were they going to be impacted by these regulations and what did we need to change? I came up with the project plan and after getting buy-in, I followed up really frequently to make sure we were actually on track because we are up against such a tight deadline. And finally, the result. Again, the result can be very short and sweet. So the result of this situation was that we met the deadline because of my work. You want to make sure that you, again, give the interviewer a reason to, to believe that you were the one that made this all happen. Um, and we got the money that we needed. So hopefully that is a helpful example um, of how you can master interviewer interviews and help your interviewer see why you are so great for the job. In other professional settings where you might be asked to speak impromptu is in meetings. In meetings, your boss might approach you and say, Anna, our sales this quarter has decreased by 10%. What do you think we could do? Or, David, do you think we should invest in this new investment opportunity? In both of the scenarios, a good structure that could help you out of anxiety is PREP. PREP stands for point, reason, example, and point. You could start your speech with a really strong point of argument and then support it with a specific reason. You can then move on to a concrete example showing why your point is a good one to follow and agree on. And to make sure that your audience didn't forget what your point is after so much content even in between, you can close your speech again by stating the point. You might want to ask, why is prep a specific good structure to follow? The major reason is that it can draw in audiences of, a di of different backgrounds. Research has shown that reasons appeals to our logical left head, while examples and stories appeals to our emotional right head. So say if you are in a high stick meeting or cross-functional meeting where you have people uh, who both tend to think, where you both have people who tend to think more logically to people from the technology side. At the same time, you also have audience who are easier to resonate emotionally. For example, the people from the sales side Prep is such a good structure that can make sure that your speech stays balanced and you don't unfortunately lose half of your audience by either focusing too much on the logical reasons or purely on examples or stories. Now, let's look at an example of how we could use prep effectively. Say you work in a traditional brick and mortar retailer and you want to suggest strengthening your online sales effort. So in a meeting, you might want to add, you, you might want to use prep and start like this. We should gradually move our offline sales focus and capital to online sales. The major reason is that during the past years, we've seen offline sales decreasing while online sales going up hills. In fact, our major competitor, Best Buy, closed over a thousand of its stores earlier this year and turn them into distribution centers for online sales, which has increased online sales of 30% for the company. Therefore, I strongly suggest a shift from offline sales to online sales. C, prep is actually very easy to use and can make sure that your impromptu speech stays balanced and structured. Um, so, the next time when your boss approaches you in a meeting and asks you what to do to stop the sales, lo sales lies, or whether the company should invest in a new investment opportunity, don't panic. Think of a point, reason, example. Talk about them in a consistent and structured way and end your speech with the point again. In fact, if you looked at what we went through just now, you can easily find that I actually use prep to structure my own speech to introduce prep to you all. We first talked about the point that prep is a good structure to use in impromptu speaking in meetings, and the major reason being that it can draw in audiences of different backgrounds. We then move on to example of online sales, offline sales, and I close my speech again by stating the point and then encourage you to use prep in your next meetings. So. If you feel good about using prep, why don't you start using it in your next GSB meetings with your fellows?
Next, we want to talk to you about impromptu speaking in social or personal settings. Now, we all know this can be particularly intimidating. I know when I was asked to give a toast at my dad's wedding reception without knowing I was going to have to do it, I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> but thankfully, just like we saw with the frameworks they showed for interviews and meetings, there are simple structures you can have in mind beforehand that will make the experience much more comfortable and easy for you to give an impromptu speech in a social setting. So before I introduce those structures, I want to ask by show of hands, who's been to talk? Right. Now, if you've been to talk, you guys probably know that people often start their talk by telling a story. If you remember back to Sydney's talk, she gave us the story about how she started playing the bassoon. Then she went on to talk about what that illustrated about her and her personality. And as you might guess, there's a reason that people start their talk by telling a story. And for those same reasons, you should use them when you have to give an impromptu speech in a social or personal setting. First of all, telling a story engages the audience. When you're in a social setting, people can be talking to each other instead of listening to you. And it's a lot more engaging to listen to a story than it is to listen to a set of facts or figures that re you're regurgitating. And second, it's impromptu. And it's a lot easier for you to try to recount the story that you know well than it is to try to memorize things right beforehand and rattle off a list of facts that you might not have a good handle on. Thankfully, the second part of the structure is also pretty simple. Just explicitly make the point that the story illustrated. It might be as simple as describing what the story made you think or how it made you feel. If you're giving a wedding toast, it might be describing how the story illustrated to you how good of a match the bride and groom are. Or if it's a birthday toast, it might be how the story illustrated just how good of a friend that person is. Again, the value in this structure is that it's something that's familiar and known to you and it'll be easier for you to recount convincingly to your audience. And lastly, just finish strong in whatever manner is appropriate for the setting you're in. It might be as simple as raising a glass and asking everyone to celebrate with you, but don't apologize and don't be afraid to reiterate your point. It'll just help to drive home your message and it'll make you enjoy the speech that much more. So we've all learned in this class to stand and appreciate our applause. And if you use this structure, you'll have an easier, more enjoyable time giving your next personal impromptu speech and you'll be able to enjoy it more. Great, so we've just heard three techniques for how you can be better at impromptu speaking and sound prepared even if, or sound polished even if you haven't prepared. Now we want to invite you to use this the next time um, that you're in one of these scenarios. All of you are going to be interviewing for jobs this summer or in the fall or going to be doing internships and many of us are going to be attending weddings or other celebrations over the summer. So there's a lot of opportunities in your immediate future to take a step back and reach for one of these three techniques, whichever one speaks the most to your personal style and use them.